Hello and welcome to another episode of Snake Clips. Today we're just taking care of some snakes. This is my Korean rat snake. Uh, very cool snake. I love the colorations on this guy. We're just going to try to... I just cleaned his enclosure there. Gave him a fresh newspaper and water. Let's see if he wants a mouse. Get his attention here. Uh. Let me see if he wants a mouse or not. Come on, pay attention. You don't really have to make the mouse dance or anything, you just got to get their attention, let them know that you have it. There he goes. See, I'm holding him. He still took the mouse right off the tongs. Really cool. Just get his attention, let him know there's food there. And he'll just gobble that. Huh? You guys want to watch him gobble it down? Take a second here. It's going to look like he's going to try to butt munch it. Which means he's going to eat it backwards. Depends on the size of the prey and the, the snake. But uh, sometimes if the prey is too large, they can't butt munch it because the legs will fold out but if it's a smaller prey um, and they're determined enough like it looks like he is right now he'll be able to get that down there he'll try his hardest sometimes the legs will flare out a little bit but if it's like I said if it's a smaller prey and it's a good sized snake who has enough power he'll just power it down regardless of of uh, which way the mouse is going but that's why snakes eat their prey generally head first is because the legs or the wings if they're a chicken or a bird or something like that they'll fold up very nicely and the prey will go down nice and smoothly if they try to eat it butt first which is what he's doing sometimes the legs or the wings the feathers and stuff will flare out and will prohibit the snake from actually being able to swallow it. Being this was a small mouse, he was able to just simply pretty much break the limbs, pushing them in the wrong direction, and he got him down. And here he goes. You see him swallowing it now. He's got it down into the throat area. And now he's pushing the prey down into the, in, toward his uh, stomach. You can see he's looking at me now. He's like, where's another one? I'm hungry. Give me more food. But that's all this guy gets. He gets one mouse, so he's taken care of. Got a nice clean enclosure. And I just cleaned this cow king's cage. And here he is. Again, I'll pick him up. Got a nice mouse for him. See if he wants that. Smelling it. Is that what you want, huh? Want that? Maybe. Mm, not so sure. There he goes. There he goes. As you can see, snakes aren't that picky. Um, as people say, oh, you gotta be real careful with them when they eat, blah, 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 blah. As you can see, I'm holding him. And he's got the mouse hanging out of his mouth. And he's not dropping the mouse. He knows I'm not gonna hurt him. And, uh, used to be a a group they called them in hand feeding and they would actually hold the snake and offer them the food and they would sit there and hold the snake while the snake would eat the food um, you know you gotta be patient with them okay but I'm not gonna do that now I'm gonna set him back down here and he'll go ahead and he'll let's see if he's gonna start eating that now or if he's gonna make us wait And he's not going to gobble it up on us, but looks like he is going to see if we get him to eat it on camera for you. Of course, he got it by the head, but I was holding him, and I kind of put that right by his, his head there when he grabbed it. 
he's just trying to position it, it into his mouth better. And I'm sure once he gets that positioned in his mouth, it won't take him long to actually get it down. It's kind of cool how snakes use various things around them to position the mouse. Like he's using a wall over there to help um, push it to the one side. Um, <clears throat> trying to get it more centered in his mouth. Once he does get that centered in his mouth, he's just going to chomp it down, hopefully. It won't take forever. And hopefully he's not going to take it off camera on us. It looks like there he starts to go. He's moving up on it now. Once they get it into their mouth, into those throat muscles, um, it doesn't take them long to uh, pull that mouse right down into their stomach. I think he's chose though to where he's eating it right now. I don't think he can actually see him because of the water bowl. Here he comes. I think he heard me so he pulled it back farther so you get a better view of him eating that mouse. And normally I don't, you know, take the time to let you guys watch a snake eat. Um, I always, you know, I, I, to me it's just something I see all the time constantly. So um, I just take it for granted that, you know, Everybody who's watching these videos, they've watched snakes eat before, and today that's not, you know, that's not always the case. Some of you guys may not even own snakes, they just like to watch the videos. Other of you um, that do own snakes, um, you know, you never get tired. I mean, to me, feeding reptiles is probably the coolest part of owning a reptile. Um, I also like, I'm not, I don't own any, but uh, like frogs. You got uh, pixie frogs and you got Pac-Man frogs, uh, and I love I love the uh, pixie and the Pac-Man frogs because they kind of bury themselves deep into the the soil there, and they just you know a mouse or a cricket or something will come by, and it's almost like a scientific uh, scary movie. This mouth just comes coming up out of the ground and devours the food, and uh, really cool to watch. And to me, any frog that eats mice and stuff and rats, uh, awesome, awesome type of frogs. And where I work, I'm constantly feeding the Pixie and the Pac-Man frogs once a week when I feed the snakes. If some of the snakes won't eat all their food, I'll uh, give them to the frogs and I love to watch them eat. I take their little stubby legs sometimes because sometimes they'll grab the, the mouse and they'll grab me in the middle. And uh, when they grab him in the middle, of course, it doesn't fit in their mouth. And they take their short little stubby front legs and they actually fold him up and like just pull him right into their mouth. I mean, it's so awesome to watch a uh, Pac-Man or a Pixie Frog eat uh, a mouse that's a little bit bigger than what they should be eating. Um, but like here with the snakes... Um, wherever they grab it, if they grab it by the, the back, sometimes they'll do what's called butt munching, which is what the first snake did for you. Um, other times if they grab it from the middle, uh, they'll work their way around the mouse until they find the head and swallow it. Uh, it's just amazing to me how without having any uh, hands and stuff to position the food, how they can maneuver it and push it against objects and use objects to reposition it in their mouth um, and, and then they get it down that way. To me that's just so cool. I mean some people say that snakes don't have the ability to think, they're all instinctual, but I really don't think that's true. I think snakes do have some ability um, to think. I think they're, they're wise sometimes. They, we, we don't give them enough credit. As you can see here now, he's got it into his throat, so you see the tail hanging out of his mouth. And to me, that's always cool, watching the tail, last part of that, hanging out of his mouth. And once he gets that into the throat muscles, he'll just pull that, his muscles will just pull that mouse right down into him. And you just watch the tail disappear. And you see now, just look at the muscles pulling that mouse down in there. You see it moving? And now he's, he's just going to use, he's just going to pull it in with his muscles all the way down to his stomach now. Very, very awesome thing to watch a snake eat food. 
Okay, now here is my jumping viper, and I have a dilemma today with this guy because normally, once you um, like with these guys, you move a snake, then they tend not to want to eat for you. But he really does have a pile of poop in the back corner there that I really need to get rid of because I don't want any of the bacteria. So today we are going to move him and hopefully he'll still eat for us. So we're going to hook him here and get him up. Hopefully he'll stay on the stick for us. And move him over here into the temporary container. Grab his water bowl and his cave. And this guy took a major dump right back here in the corner. Not any luck. You just fold it right up into the newspaper. That's why I love the newspaper. And we'll do a little, clean the glass a little bit here too. Again, like I always say, I'm not the best glass cleaner in the world. And a gentleman gave me advice to use uh, cr uh, crumbled up newspaper to clean the glass with. And uh, I usually take people's advice and I'm, not not taking his advice I just always forget to do it I'm sure it works but for right now we're uh, wiping it down with the alcohol and the paper towel and get this all cleaned up for him There's a newspaper in there. I don't actually read the newspaper, but I get like four, four or five piles of it here. And by the time I get done putting this down into the different enclosures, I actually do end up reading some of the stories here just by the fact that I'm constantly putting them in here. So I would have thought that in today's technology that the days of newspaper would be history but Apparently a lot of people still like to hold something in their hand when they read. So newspapers are still around, libraries are still in business, which is a good thing because I do a lot of educational shows at libraries. So I'm glad uh, people still go to the library. Get this guy a nice amount of water here. And let's see if he'll eat for us. So now we're gonna put him back in there. This is a very beautiful viper. I love his, his colors. His scales are extremely hard. They're, they're not soft whatsoever. They're very hard. If you go to hold him and he whacks you with his tail, it actually hurts um, when he, if he thrashes around on you. So now let's grab his mouse and see if he'll eat for us, but I got a feeling he's not going to take this because I disturbed him. And that's usually the case whenever I disturb them, I have to take them out like that. These. These venomous snakes, for some reason, typically do not want to eat for me. But let's 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 let this guy make a liar out of me today. 
I would love that. Let me see if he'll take it. I say you usually don't want to stick it right in their face. Rub it on his body, get his attention. He doesn't really seem to care. I got a feeling he's not going to take it from me. It's very common for when I have to move him, but I'd rather have him skip a meal. As you can see, he's nice and fat. That's not going to hurt him to skip a meal. All right. No, it's not going to take it from me. Get to actually get to know your snakes, which is pretty cool. Um, you know what they're going to do, what they're not going to do. So, you don't get a meal this time. But he's got fresh water and a nice clean enclosure, which I think is a better trade off. As he's a little fat, so. And we'll put him back and go on to the next snake. Alright, here's a black rat snake. And we're going to see if he'll eat the mouse that the. Uh, the jumping viper didn't want. Again, I had to take him out in order to clean his enclosure. Now if I move this around, I'm going to scare him, but you see I just hold it in front of him. He's flicking his tongue. He's checking it out. He knows that it's food now. And you see that? How gently he took that? And I'll just wiggle it just a little bit. But he had no need to attack it. He didn't try to wrap it back up again and re-kill it like some snakes do. He took it from me very gently. And now I just give him a second so he feels secure. And we're going to allow you to watch him gobble that up too. So today we actually let you watch three snakes eat mice, which I normally um, don't take the time to let you guys watch them, uh, you know, eat them. But what he's doing right now is he's basically, he was just holding on to it, make sure that it was okay for him to start eating it. Because again, when snakes are eating, they're the most vulnerable at that point to be attacked. Their mouth is full. They don't have a way to defend themselves. Um, they, they can't really flee too fast. So they're at the most vulnerable time is when they try to eat. So snakes really don't enjoy eating a meal like, like I do. I mean, when I sit down, I don't worry about nothing, man. I enjoy the food. Um, my wife's always yelling at me. You know, I'm not a small guy. I'm a big guy, and she's like, you know, you, you eat too much. It's like, well, you know what? When I eat, though, I eat because I enjoy eating. I don't eat to survive. I eat because I love the taste of the food. Um, I, I enjoy it, and that's why I eat, and that's why I'm a big guy. But for snakes, they can't really enjoy their food because he's got to keep on the watch now to make sure that nothing's going to come and attack him. If something were to come to attack him right now, he would shake that mouse right out of his that out of his mouth um, so that he could defend himself. He would also, if he had uh, swallowed that that mouse and he had it farther down in him. Um, and something were to try to attack him, he would actually puke it back up or regurgitate it back up so that he would be able to fight. I mean, and that's why after you feed a snake, it's best to leave them go for a, about a day normally um, without handling them or anything because you don't want them to regurgitate their food back up. Um, you, you want them to be able to digest that. Some people will wait for, you know, an extended long period of time. They may wait for two days, um, which I don't think is necessary to go that long unless you feed something a huge meal. Um, but otherwise, 24 hours is usually plenty long enough to let the snake relax, digest his food to the point where he won't want to throw it back up again. Um, as you can see, again, um, as he's eating, he's trying to get that in his mouth into the right position. Once he gets that into his throat muscles, that's where he wants that to go. Um, he'll be able to basically let the throat muscles take over and just pull the food right down into his mouth. Now this particular snake here is a black rat snake. 
Uh, black rat snakes are native to my area, which is New York. Um, so I have to have a license to keep him. Um, the DEC requires that you have a license to keep any snake that is native to your area um, in New York. So I have a license to keep him, but a lot of places, uh, like I just got a, another black rat snake from the Natural History Museum, um, because they don't like all that white markings on him. There's also had a lot of white markings. This particular black rat snake was caught down in Florida. Um, where apparently white markings on, on the black rat snakes are more common. Um, up here though I have seen them out in the wild where they're jet black. There's no markings whatsoever or very faint markings. And I have seen them up here where they do have the, the, the whiter markings, the saddles that do show through. They're not as common, but it is something that does happen. That's why when people call me or they'll send me an email, They'll ask me if I can identify the snake, and they'll give me a description of it. And by giving me a description of it, though, it's so hard to ID a snake just by a description because of the fact that the colors can vary um, greatly within the same region. Um, so it's much better if you guys need me to ID a snake for you. Number one, give me a picture, or two, um, as close up as possible of the snake. And number two, tell me exactly where you took the picture at, um, the state, the city. Um, this way, I, it really helps me to be able to identify the snake positively for you. I mean, granted, most of the snakes um, that are found, at least in the United States, um, I say most because there's a, a smaller snakes like, um, like a queen snake and stuff like that, which I'm not really common with by, by looking at it. Uh, but most of the snakes from the United States I can ID pretty much just uh, by looking at them. Uh, rattlesnakes, though, again, it needs to, to know the exact location and everything because the pattern and the colors and stuff can vary pretty greatly um, on these type of snakes. And sometimes it's hard to ID the specific, uh, the specific kind of rattlesnake it is. As you can see now, he's right down to the tail part, which again, that's my favorite part, just a tail hanging out of his mouth. You can see how far he's got it in to his throat there. He'll just use the muscles now to pull that right down into his belly where he'll go hide in his corner, curl up, and he will finish digesting that food. Okay guys, well this is the last of the snakes we're here to show you today. So I hope you enjoyed what you got to see. Um, if you like it, please hit the like button. This lets me know that you guys actually like what I'm doing. If you really like it and you want to see more of what we do, and hopefully we're going to try to do uh, a lot more stuff. I mean, I want you guys to, you know, give me some ideas and stuff. But if you really like what we do, then uh, please subscribe to us. And it's also nice if you see something you like to share it with other people so that they can watch it and hopefully subscribe as well. Uh, again, my saying is keep it real. Um, and when I mean keep it real, uh, like before when I was feeding the king snake and I was holding it in my hand and I handed it a mouse, because I know my snake, I know he would actually eat in my hand if I held him. Um, I don't have to like phony my videos up. Whatever you see on my videos, that's what you get. That's what I mean by keeping it real. Don't dramatic, I'm not trying to dramatize anything here this is just the way it is it's the way I am um, and also I want you guys to have a wonderful excellent day up here it's very cold we're expecting a, a blizzard a very bad storm not really a blizzard but a storm to hit us um, I get one more day tomorrow's the last day of my vacation and uh, it looks like I'm going to be out there with my snow blower blowing snow. So hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Keep it real and uh, see you on the next video. See that tail going? That's his way of telling me he's still eating his food, pushing it down and to leave him alone.